I get asked quite a lot what cameras I use and which is my favourite. So in this episode, I thought I'd show you guys my 35mm film camera collection and how I come across them and also how much I paid. And when I say collection, I don't mean gathering dust in a cabinet or display for decor or ideas or turning them into lamps to sit in posh houses in Chelsea. No, 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 no. My cameras get used, apart from the broken ones, and I do have a couple of broken ones. I shall put links in this video description if you want to see any of these cameras in action. So uh, let's crack on, let's get through my cameras. So this is my Pentax Spotmatic F, and I got this camera on a local Facebook group about eight years ago for 10 pounds. The mirror was stuck in the up position, but nothing a bit of gun oil couldn't fix in the clockworks. Unfortunately, the light meter doesn't work, but that's not the end of the world. It still works in all its glory, apart from the hot shoot, which I recently discovered isn't that great for flash. The 55mm Takamar lens that came with the camera is a lovely sharp lens, and the whole camera is a good solid camera, which you can snap up on the used markets for around about £100, maybe even less. This is the Canon EF. I was given this camera by a kind gentleman who was out walking his dog when I was in the woods shooting film. We got chatting about photography and he invited me over to his house to collect the camera. Unfortunately, the light meter and electronics never worked, but I was still able to shoot the camera at certain speeds. Even more unfortunate, the camera doesn't work at all anymore and the shutter mechanism is completely shot. It just needs a little bit of work. The camera has a lovely Canon 50mm 1.8 FD lens and the whole unit is very heavy. They also called this camera the Black Beauty. There are a few bodies on eBay at the moment from Japan I've noticed starting from about £40 and it's a great camera if you can snap one up. This is the Nikon F90X and it's the first SLR that I ever owned. I bought this from a guy who inspired me to shoot film called Stan. Now Stan was a retired press photographer. Me and Stan would have many chats in his flat about photography over a cup of coffee and I would call him boss. Stan passed away before I could even show him my first print and when I started my YouTube channel the word boss is a tribute to Stan. Now you know, shoot film like a boss. The Nikon F90X works great and if I ever want to shoot film with no problems I can rely heavily on this camera. I have done a review of this camera in the past on my channel and the link is in the description. The lens is a Sigma macro lens, I don't have any Nikon lenses so I always use this lens on this camera. The Nikon F90X are always coming up on the used camera market and if you're lucky you can find a body for around £60. This is the Chinon CE5. These cameras were sold usually in a bundle box with motor wine and a flash back in the 80s in a well-known camera and hi-fi store called Dixon's. I got this camera on a local Facebook group for £50 and with some other bits and bobs as well. Another solid camera which came with a fantastic Chinon 50mm 1.7 lens. The lens is a K-mount fit and I also have a lovely Pentax K-mount 50mm lens that I use with this camera. It is another camera that I can rely on when it comes to shooting film and it's in perfect working order. You can buy these cameras online for around 50 to 100 pounds, one that I would recommend to any starter. This is the Chinon CS fully manual camera. This camera is on long term loan to me and is a camera that I use if I want to shoot anything wide. I have an M42 screw fit Hanamex 28mm lens attached to it which is a great little lens and it's cheap too. The light meter works well on this camera and I'm often out shooting this one for seascapes and landscapes. You can pick these cameras up body only and in very good condition online for about £20 to £40. Pounds. I wouldn't recommend it to the starter because it's a fully manual camera, but if you're feeling brave, pick one up. This is the Braun Packset 35mm rangefinder camera. I was given this camera by an elderly gentleman called John that I met one day when he came into my studio for a passport photograph with his wife. Like Stan, he was a very knowledgeable chap and I would often visit him and chat about photography. You can learn a lot from old school photographers and they often have fascinating stories. This was John's walk around camera in the 1950s. It's a tricky camera to use as it's fully manual with a rangefinder focusing. He always told me to set the camera to infinite and shoot at f8. 
This camera still works fine today, and now and again, I take it out for a shoot. These Braun Packset cameras are very cheap online to buy, and I've seen some selling for as little as £20. This is the Helena 35mm camera which was given to me by my mate Gaz. Now you've all met Gaz on the channel a few times and Gaz will be back once the restrictions are lifted. This camera is similar to the pack set, it's fully manual but it's not a rangefinder so you have to work out your focusing distances yourself. You can buy a separate rangefinder for it that fits on the hot shoe. These cameras are on the used market for around £10. I've only used this camera a couple of times but it has worked a treat and I do have a video on my channel about this camera. Once again, the link is in the description. Now this is the Olympus OM20, and I got this camera on eBay for £75, and it came with an Olympus Flash 2. I was inspired by the Olympus range after having the joy of trying out the Olympus OM10 on the channel a few years ago. However, I like the idea of the OM20 as it's got a built-in shutter selector, whereas the OM10 had a separate attachment. This camera is one of my favourites. The light meter is slightly out by a stop and the timer doesn't work, but that's no big deal. It's still great to shoot and it's got a fantastic lens too. On the used market today, you can pick these cameras up with a standard lens for around 70 to 100 pounds. And finally, this is the Yashica Electro 35 GTN. I was given this camera by my mate Andy one night when we was playing snooker. It was his father's. At the time, I had not got a clue what it was or how to use it, but I soon discovered that this camera had its own fan club, a bit like the Land Rover Defender. It's a classic amongst rangefinder fans and a great alternative if you can't afford the Leica. Who can? Unfortunately, the light meter in this camera is completely shot. However, I can still use the camera at what I believe is 1 400th of a second shutter speed. If there's one thing about this camera, it is the lens. It is incredibly sharp, and it's also very discreet as a street photographer's camera due to its quiet leaf shutter. There are many Electro 35s online, and if you're lucky, you can pick a fully working Electro up for as little as £50. So there you have it. That is all my 35mm cameras that I own so far. There are a few I'd love to get my hands on, but all in good time as long as the price doesn't keep going up. But if you look around, there are a few surprising bargains out there still to be snapped up. If you have a classic old camera that you don't use anymore and want to sell or pass it on, make sure it goes to someone that will put it to good use rather than turning it into some funky looking lamp. There are still plenty of miles left in these classic beauties. Cheers guys.